do to prevent spread of viruses. We use them all the time to keep us from getting regular colds, and they may not seem very high tech, but they can do a lot. They can go a long way toward helping slow the spread of things like this nasty coronavirus. Face masks specifically, uh, I've seen mixed reports that they work initially, but as soon as they get any level of moisture from your breath or, or anything like that, that they cease to work. What's the advice? Well, first of all, there's multiple different kinds of face masks. There's the surgical mask that people wear that doesn't really seal up very well. That's super good if you put it on the patient who's sick because that will contain their secretions and protect everyone around them. However, the, if you're the one who wants to protect yourself, those N95 masks you were just showing are much better. They have a tight seal around the face, but you need to be fit tested in order to know exactly which size you should be wearing and you have to be trained on how to wear it properly and they can get pretty uncomfortable so they're not a great choice for just sort of going out in the public. Yeah, you also have to shave your beard if you want them to fit well <laughs> according to the CDC That's which true. has a whole picture on how to do it. Uh, what about yeah. hand washing versus sanitizer? Which one's more effective and do well, either of them really prevent this? Yeah, uh, keeping your hands clean so that you don't touch your face, no matter what things you're touching with your hands, is a really important piece of preventing infection in hospitals, in schools, and everywhere you go. Soap and water works really well. It can dry out your hands a little bit more, but when you do it, you want to do it right. That means getting your hands wet with warm water, cleaning them, getting all of the surfaces with soap for 20 seconds. That's a full time through happy birthday. And then also rinsing them off afterwards. So soap and water is your best choice when you have visibly soiled hands or when you haven't washed your hands in a long time. In between then, I recommend hand sanitizer, alcohol-based hand sanitizer. That's what we use in the hospital. That's what protects our healthcare providers from patient illnesses and protects each patient from being catching what's in the next patient's room. So those are available to you, and you can keep them with you in these fancy little packets. I carry them with me. That's what I use. And, and Dr. Landon, what about the other things that we would typically do in and around flu season to try and stay healthy, like take vitamin C, take other supplements like echinacea and, and try and make sure we get plenty of sleep? Do, do those apply or because it's a kind of unique viral infection, is, is, is that not really applicable? It's not clear whether or not echinacea and vitamin C are going to be super beneficial, but if you feel confident and you've tolerated them in the past, there's no reason not to try them. Sleep, though, has been shown. A good night's sleep has been proven to help reduce your risk of getting the common cold, and so I think it's probably a good idea. Although we don't have clear evidence for this coronavirus, it's not going to hurt. And just quickly one more, sorry, Dr. Landon, in terms of the debate around when we get to spring and summer and the weather improving. Is that, uh, uh, is that relevant at all or not? I really, really hope that works out, but I don't know if it's going to. I'll remind everyone that 2009 H1N1 came along in April in Mexico and then spread through the United States all through the summer, and that was an influenza, which should be long gone by July. So I don't know that we can expect with a completely susceptible population, it doesn't really make sense to expect that this is just going to fizzle out as soon as we get a little bit more sunshine.